Oh, hello. Hello. Oh my god, you know I'm streaming, right? Oh no, I didn't know. Yeah, should I mute you? Uh, no, it's not personal. Somebody, okay. somebody, <laughs> wow. somebody I know was just like I was watching an interview with you, Abba, and I was like, "What? What interview?" And they're like, "It was you and some Iraqi girl." And I was like, "Who do I know who's Iraqi?" Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the only cool girl from there me how are you how have you been how was tour oh uh, tour was cool tour was cool going to america and seeing how fucked up it is in different pockets was amazing good i'm but so good glad people. look at you bubble hopping yeah bubble hopping yeah that's right that's right um but yeah i uh i thought that was so funny and then she was just referencing the interview and i was just like oh yeah that interview did happen all like a year ago that She's is like, so why funny was the, why was the first 10 minutes so awkward <laughs> Oh, what are you uh, talking about? And I had to go back and watch. I was like, oh, yeah, we had that whole talk about foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I though, like, forgot. we also just met each other. So to be fair, I feel like we were testing each other out a bit. Did you? I don't know. I felt like it was comfortable but fun, but, like, a little bit, like, I would. F I always feel like I, I, get, an I get anxious. I, I felt anxious. Did you feel anxious? No. Oh, I always feel anxious when I talk to people. <laughs> It's possible. I mean, maybe I maybe I I felt it in that moment coming from you, and then I, just, that. I actually never asked you. How did you feel about that? You know what? I next time around would love to have a more in depth conversation. I feel like I was a little bit not as vulnerable as I could have been, which would have added to the conversation. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I loved I it think, though. Uh, I, you know, I like our energy together. Yeah, I I, I don't think you always have to get to that place sometimes i think if you force it it just doesn't come out naturally so and then yeah. it just uh it feels a little cheapened so i think it's one of those things you got to feel it out and if you're able to get there right away great if you're not that's okay too yeah um vulnerability is not always something you can turn on turn off i think that's true that is yeah. true yeah. i think you give yourself opportunities but i don't know if it's always something that you can immediately because i feel like if you're not in the right space it's like how do you really get to that depth or do you feel differently about that? No, no, I think I agree. I mean, it's always you. It's weird. I think I overthink it a little bit where I don't want to make someone else uncomfortable. But I also think it takes time to get to that place. So you kind of like, oh, maybe that's the right kind of foreplay. Is like you want to give people time to be vulnerable, right? Yeah, yeah. Did Did you uh, have any other thoughts about that interview? Um, is there a chance okay. to be vulnerable right now? Oh damn. Okay. <laughs> I okay. I'll tell spot. you. I'll tell you one thought that I had during the time. I'm not sure that I think it now, but at the time, I definitely wondered if you uh -huh. were um, confused by me or afraid to engage with me or at all were worried about associating with like the conversation at all or with me. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. Like, no, like, okay, but like, I know you did it, and I know we had a great time, but you know, like, I wasn't sure if you were putting up a wall with me or not. Like, I couldn't quite feel it, but then you were so sweet, and then we laughed, and then you let me hit you. So I was like, no, we're good. But you know, I, ha you know, I don't know if that's just my anxiety. Yeah, no, I think if you don't know somebody and you get a response that's not entirely positive, or, you know, like you're unsure what the response is, then it's normal to just start to think things in your head. But no, I, I didn't, uh, feel any type of way about associating with you or anything like that. that's never even a thought that crossed my mind so you don't have to worry about that oh, okay well in that case i can't wait to do it again <laughs> associating with you like yo i don't want to be part of this weirdos brand <laughs> i mean hey honestly i feel like i'm one of the i must talk weird because people get confused but then some people don't and then i don't know who's weird abba am i the weird one is the world weird i can't decide you know what? I went to go rewatch that first 10 minutes. I was like, you know what? Everyone said I was crazy. But I'm like, no, that shit is jarring. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe I was being an asshole. Let me watch it. I was like, no, nah, I was not being an asshole. I was all right. <laughs> no, actually, I think you told me during that podcast, it felt like a, almost like an interrogation. I've gotten the feedback on dates, but you know what? I'm married now, so it worked. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, you just show up and you're just like, what do you think about Ukraine? That's like, you know, somebody going to like that. But a lot of people will be like, all right, uh, I don't even know you that well. You need to chill out, mom. True. So I think it's just, a, it's just a thing. You know, you don't know somebody having a conversation with them the first time. I've telling this to someone else, too. It's like me and my homies, like, when we talk, we swear, we curse. But, like, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm talking to some old geezer, I'm not going to be like, hey, what's up, motherfucker? Like, I'm, I'm obviously <laughs> going to probably shift my language a little bit, right? So I feel like yeah. in those conversations, it's also... 
a little bit adaptive prone. But some people don't like to. Some people kind of want to keep that 100 same energy with everybody. I just, I don't, I don't know if that's always the right move. I actually don't think it's the right move. Personally. Okay. I just, yeah, yeah, no, I just had this discussion with my audience where I'm like, okay, are you not supposed to change a little bit when you're around different people to like make people comfortable? Or am I like, am I like, is this my neurodivergency? What is this? Like, shouldn't you, maybe my parents just taught me like you're, you're in their home, like be like, have manners, but be yourself, but have manners. And it's like, it's hard to know what that means. Uh, yeah, I think you just have to have some social tact. I I think most people, you know, interact in different bubbles or circles, learn that Uh, Mm -hmm. you have to, I I don't even know how you could coexist in different circles and not have to adapt yourself to some degree. Like I'm not the same around kids that I am around adults. Obviously I I talk to kids differently with different language. I'm not the same way around like African parents as I Mm -hmm. am around my homies. Right. There's just certain lingo that I won't use out of respect for like the social conventions of that circle. Now, some change, I'd imagine there's some change that's too much where it almost makes you seem fake. But I think right. a little bit of tact is always acceptable in order to make things uh, possible. Yeah. How much do you do it online? Like when you're talking to other YouTubers, like do you ever think about um, I have to be different? Like I've seen you on so many podcasts at this point, but you seem pretty consistent as like, yeah. a person. Do you yeah. act any differently online or do you think about that when socializing? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think um, I think the reason why I'm pretty consistent is because I am being myself. Mm. Um, I think the, some of the changes are like very small. Thankfully, like uh, a lot of the spaces I interact with online, even on podcasts, are very similar to my own. Like, you know, I did a no jumper interview. They're pretty like hands off and say whatever you want. Uh, you know, I talked to Destiny a bunch of times. Pretty hands off, doesn't care whatever you say. I went to Flagrant, no jumper, mm. um, all hands off places. So that was fun. But if I was, you know, hypothetically this is not real but let's say i was talking to jordan peterson i might not mm. use the same kind of swear words in that kind of academic setting as right. i would there right the same way if i'm at my job i'm not going to talk like i'm with my homies right so yeah you know, um i think it's just knowing what your kind of person you are and then if it's completely like if your platform you're going off is completely the opposite of who you are then maybe that's not the space for you but mm. yeah yeah, that's what I wonder because like I feel like I found a really nice little pocket on the internet. I really like my space, but I, <laughs> you know, I don't always um, understand how other people are operating or the rules of a space. But I noticed that I think it's because I I go so many different places. I think I'm almost starting to get overwhelmed with how many places I've been. Like you're traveled, you've been just so many countries. Sometimes I mix up and blur the lines of all the places I've been, where I have to like readjust to be like I'm in a different place now. Like I'm in Croatia now. I moved. I'm here. And it's great and beautiful, very different. They are not used to my smiles. They are not used to my bubbly hand waving. I did that a few times and I do not do it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, because like the, whatever you were doing probably was like jarring or really weird to them. Now, maybe it's possible you kept doing it. They would have adjusted to you. But I feel like that's a very tough thing to keep up. And also, yeah. I think if you're in a different community. There, There is some adjusting you have to do. Um, yes. In terms of things, for sure. Yeah, and I do. I I don't want to come here and be like, you have to be like Brittany. I actually like that I get to adapt to them. And they're very hands off. They're very cool here. It's very like you do you, I do me. And like no one's bothering each other in the streets. Like it's very, I like it, but it's very different than what I'm used to. Like nobody's talking to you for 20 minutes at the the register. You know what I mean? Versus in small town America. Oh my God. Like Walmart was like an hour long trip because someone was going to talk to you. Versus here. mm -mm. Yeah, no one's talking to you. No. No, no, they're barely looking at you. I'm glad that you're adjusting. Okay, that's good. Yeah, See? It's good. See, you got, you got to adjust the people. Yeah, it's been great. But like, what I a great change. I remember you that question. You'd be like, who makes the rules? I'm like, whatever bubble you're in, I suppose they make the rules. True. Now, but, but yeah. okay, yes, whoever makes, the majority makes the rules, but you know that the majority isn't always right. <laughs> so what do you do as an individual, right? Like, my theory is, like, learn to adapt, make your own little bubble. But what would you say is the answer? Well. I don't think it's a matter of whether it's right or wrong. Because I, I think social conventions aren't always a matter of right or wrong. They're just general understandings that people have come to. Now, you can agree or disagree with them, but they're not right or wrong. They're mm-hmm. just ways of being. It's like uh, I, I pour in the, 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 the cereal before the oh. milk. That, that's not right or wrong. That's just a way of Sorry, Abba, wait. Repeat that. I knocked my ear out. Tell me that again. I was just saying like it's, it's similar to pouring in the, 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 the milk before the cereal. That's not right or wrong. That's just a way of doing stuff. If, if all these people in this area decide like we don't like to wave at each other, right? Like that's not right or wrong. That's just the way that they prefer to live their lives. 
how far do you take that? Because I would argue that I take that almost too far sometimes where I'm like, I don't know, different world, different bubble. That's how they do things. I don't like it, but it's how they do things. But like to the point where people are doing harmful things to other people. But like, what am I supposed to do? Like, that's how they do things. How far do you take it? I I think there's always a difference between, you know, uh, someone, you know, going to a society where people don't want to wave at other people and they just want to keep to themselves or going to a place where, you know, if you show your hair, uh, you know, the police is coming for you. And then you have to ask yourself, well, if I'm not going to fight to change this community, is this in line with my values? And those are serious questions you have to have. Um, But yeah, I mean, that, that, that really just depends on how important these values are to you and whether or not you're compatible with this community. Because even if you want to change it, it doesn't matter whether you think it's right or wrong. If the community doesn't want to change it, it's not your place to change it. Like you can't, mm-hmm. I can't go to Saudi Arabia and say like, oh, women deserve, like, obviously they can do that now. But, you know, let's say 10 years ago, like if they don't want that, that's not my place to change. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. No, that's okay. Now I'm going to ask you a question I've been wanting to ask you for actually a really long time. Do you have a moment? <laughs> sure, sure. Go for it. What's the question? Are you mad at how I conducted my interview with Sneeko? Because that's the last time I talked to him. Did you feel like I should have pushed my narrative on him harder or that I should have just questioned his harder? Uh, I thought you softballed him for sure. It was very softball. Sure. I think if he wasn't your friend or someone you thought you were close to, I think you wouldn't have softballed him so hard. Did you think that I softballed you in our conversation? Um, w- w- Me? Yeah. Because I didn't think there was anything for you to really grill me on. So it didn't really matter. I think when you were, I think the conversation with Sneak was maybe a bit more adversarial or in the sense that you guys may have not been aligned on like very important topics. And so I thought it would be a little bit more contentious or at least like you would ask more difficult questions based off your values. Um, so yeah, maybe that. But as far as our interview, I think like you were just, it felt more like an interview about difficult things in life, not necessarily like uh uh, contrasting worldviews per se. Maybe I, mm. I'm still wrong. I will say like the last three years I've been practicing after being very opinionated on the internet for longer than that, I've been practicing like trying to just like let people be people, like humans going to human. But after that interview with Sneeko, I, which I was like fine with, I heard, I got this vibe from the internet where they didn't realize like I always feel like I'm just trying to meet people in their bubble because I feel like mine is so different that I feel like I could fight with everyone I talk to, but I don't want to. And now I'm trying to be more clear about my views. So like, yeah, if Sneeko and I talked again, I'd be like, make it clear where we disagree. But it felt weird to do that with him when I don't do it. I didn't do it with anyone before that. But I think Sneeko is so controversial that people want me to go after him. But then when I start going after people, they start getting upset. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I can't do what the I, audience wants. I, I, yeah, I, think, I, think, I think you can't think of this as like what does what does the audience want that, that's pointless that's always yeah, going to be pointless. For sure. some segments going to happen some segments not so you got to really think about your own values and whether or not you know the conversation you're engaging in is like something you're you're good with at the end of the day you should conduct your life however you like um i couldn't really remember the contents i think i just remember what i what i felt as though were like a bit hand wavings of behaviors that were very bizarre and so i think when i saw that i was like oh that's weird i think that's like a weird way to set things up it's like oh this person clearly did something that was like quite wrong and it Mm -hmm. felt like it was hand waved uh a a little bit easy when i know you're somebody with fairly strong opinions um even though you are humans get a human you're like oh yeah that's trash behavior (laughs) i've definitely seen you do that so it felt like you were hand waving stuff and uh you know because of your personal relationship with him maybe that's why i gave off that vibe Like if I had done something and you were asking me about it, like, let's say I had, you know, hypothetically, I'd I'd, I'd hit my ex-girlfriend, you know, and I was Mm -hmm. talking to you about it. Um, You know, I think there's ways you can have that conversation with your friend and still not hand wave what they've done whilst like engaging with the fact that um, in an empathetic way, like engaging with the fact that they've done something bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've done this so much with Sneeko where I've made it clear, like, don't date him. He cheats. He openly talks about it. He's not a good boyfriend. He will mistreat you. But like, people are like, that's not good enough. But I don't care about, I don't, can I be honest with you? I just can't believe anything he says. It doesn't, it's like, feels like such a grift or like a performance art thing, or it feels so fake that I'm like, yeah, like he's just like young and stupid and after money and like trying to follow Andrew Tate, but failing. And like, I mean, look at the way Andrew Tate has like changed his like, reputation so easily within the news i'm amazed he's so good at it i'm dying but it's like how can this man convince so many people 
that he's not what he said he was in the past, right? It's like, I feel like Sneeko's trying to play that game and failing, and I hope he does fail. I hope it hits him in the face so he can be a better man. But he's obviously not being a better man right now. He's not even mimicking good men. So why should I expect him to be good? You know, isn't it kind of like self-explanatory, I guess? Like, he's good in his way. Everyone is good in their way. But, like, obviously he's not my standard of good. But, like, what does that mean, right? (laughs) Well, I mean, your standard is your standard, and you can just go off of that. Wait, I think I wrote something down. Holy shit. I, I, I literally put it in the recycling bin like two, three days ago, but I didn't empty my recycling bin. Let me see what I wrote. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wrote down four things. Okay. I actually have some notes. Cool. Uh, I think you were bothered that people kept calling him a cuck because he doesn't do that anymore. Right. Right. I'm right. Or they shame him for it. I'm very sex positive. I don't like people who shame people for sex. Okay. Um, you felt like he's playing a character, right? Yeah. Why do you feel that? Um, It's not consistent enough with a person who believes things. A person who actually has values is more consistent. They don't flip-flop a lot. They don't um, waver. They don't meme a lot of their thoughts. He's too meme-y for me to take him seriously as like, he's really thought about this. Okay, so you feel like whatever he's putting out there, it's not really who he is. It's just someone he's pretending to be for what? For money? Yeah, definitely. Okay, Money, so you think clout, success. Okay. And and do you have any evidence for that or is it just like this is your feeling? Well, I mean, even recently he started talking crap on the red pill and he started saying like, I don't even want to be Muslim. And like, he started talking, he flip flops a lot. Like I've been watching him since he was a young kid and I've been following his journey to see what he'd do with his life. And he obviously like, change perspectives right and i'm like this doesn't feel authentic to who he seemed to be and then i think he flip-flops so much like who he's teams with changes constantly so i i have to assume he doesn't really have values yet right right so you're basically you're assuming that who he's presenting in public is probably not who he is behind closed doors yeah yeah right so couldn't i just do the same thing about his sex life and keep calling him a cuck oh for sure obviously yeah (laughs) I mean, like, I think he's presenting an image, but maybe I think that deep down that's just what he likes. Who knows? I'm just saying, we know we have no way of knowing. Uh, I don't think it's a credible claim on my end, but I don't think a lot of the stuff that people are assuming about him in his private life are credible either. He, I think yeah. he's a bit of a fraud. And so, you know, I think it's jokingly done, but yeah, on a more serious note, um, you feel like all content creators were the same. That's something you said pretty often. I, I think content creators are the same in a sense, well, in a few senses, but wait, wait, did you hear me say it? Uh, I just wrote down the quote. You said all content creators are the same. They seem to engage in a lot of the same behaviors. Mm. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, uh, I can't think of very many that didn't engage in the different in private, different in public narrative, like severely, or they wouldn't confront certain things in public that they are more than happy to confront in private. Like I've had much more authentic conversations in private with Sneeko than I'll ever have on the internet. And same with everyone else I know. Like the conversations we have with, like I have with people seem to be much better in private, but they don't seem to be the same in public, which seems to be consistent. Um, I'm not going to put you in that category. You think that's the same for us too? Wait, wait, wait. No. you think that's the same for us? No, I mean, I'm not going to put you in that category. Okay. Um, the only because as of so far you have been pretty consistent i mean you're not a person no offense like no offense to our relationship but like you you've never called me to confide in me about your yeah life. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so when people not, do not, that not, not, yeah. Yeah, yeah when people do that and they tell me things and then they're different online it's very hard for me to like i'm like don't tell me your secrets i don't want to know because <laughs> like then i get uh-huh. really confused and it always feels really weird but like you have you and i haven't crossed that barrier we're pretty you know what i mean we're pretty just like we're friendly but like we haven't like you haven't called me telling me about something bad you know like that's happened like trauma or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay that's fair uh so back to the thing that all content creators are the same you felt like it's because of the difference of like the private and the public 
Yeah, I feel like people are really scared to actually admit the same things in private. What I do is I try to talk about it, but I try not to be as personal or vulnerable with it. So I'll say something. I'll try to be consistent, but I don't want to like, you know, I want some sense of privacy, but I don't want to have to lie or skirt around the truth or convince my audience like this thing isn't real. And I think a lot of YouTubers think they have to do that to maintain an image, but I try to get my image online and offline as close as possible. So... Mm. I can be that person. I actually had that option, you know, should I be like a sticky YouTuber that's kind of like fake and like has a persona or should I be more like myself? And I chose a long time ago to be as close to myself as possible. So well, I don't have to keep up, you know, with the lies. It, it, instead of assuming that a lot of this is fake, isn't it possible that these are just different facets of people's personalities and that when you're talking to someone in private, you're not getting all of them the same way when you're talking to somebody in public, you're not getting all of them. I, for it, sure. You know, so for example, like I do stand up, right? Like on stand up stage, I'm a little bit more extroverted, a little louder, a little more provocative, right? And people are like, are you, is that just an act? I'm like, it's not an act. It is a part of me, but it is a performance in that I'm playing up certain parts of myself or a little bit of exaggeration. Is it a bit of a performance? Sure. Yeah. But that's also part of who I am. That's a part of like one of my many faces. Um, in the same way, like, you know, I don't know what you're like in the bedroom, hypothetically, mm -hmm. but it's possible that in the bedroom there may be a more aggressive side to you or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Is that you being fake? No, it's just a different part of you. Is it not oh, possible? I yeah. I agree. I say it all the time. We call it, I call it the different parts of Britney. There's like 10 different Britneys, like BDSM Britney and at home at church with her mom, Britney and different versions of myself that are our authentic. But I think the most authentic version of me is when all those Britneys get to be kind of together at the same time which is a lot sure. and overwhelming but yeah like i i do believe in the parts of the self i think the part that's different though is like when someone says like a deliberate um for me i, I call it a lie but i'm not sure they would perceive it as a lie because you know how um hollywood people are like content creators their job is their job so they have to be careful about maintaining an image even if it contradicts the truth behind closed doors I think that's the part I've always struggled with. Even when I was in talk radio and I got a chance to do a show, they told me I would have to stick to the the shtick, like the thing, like the conservative lesbian. That would be my thing. And I was like, I can't do this. I can't be someone in public that I'm not in private. Like it's confusing to me. And so I think that's the hardest time, the hardest part I have about YouTube content creation too, is like I never know what game people are playing. So I'm just always trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. And so for you, the issue isn't necessarily that they're different. It's that they're different in ways that completely contradict who they are in private. Yeah, it feels weird. Like, it feels confusing, especially when the narrative is like, oh, Britney's so weird. But, like, I know I'm weird, but I think it's weirder to, like, have two different personas, not two different parts of yourself. Of course, we have multi we're multifaceted creatures. I think it's weirder when it's, like, contradicting what sure. you preach I, I don't like the hypocrisy a little bit but maybe that's my weird sense of justice like my <laughs> my weird neurodivergency <laughs> fair, fair okay so just to come back to the last thing that we discussed before um one of the big things that you kept saying or two of the big things actually uh you were upset that people kept bringing up sneakers past and stuff you thought that was unfair yeah, I'm trying to remember which part of his past. I wonder if it was with, like, who, what part, what, I remember saying that. Why did I reference it? His past. Uh, it could have been the cuck stuff. It could have been pretty much anything. I mean, people been. just bring up his past. Yeah. People are just going to bring up his past, but okay. It, like, is it unfair for people to bring up his past in terms of criticizing him? I don't think it's unfair for anyone to do anything. I think it's unfair to ask people to treat him to be like for us to treat people differently when everyone's doing things that feel just as inauthentic as Sneeko is to me sometimes. Like, uh -huh. you remember when Sneeko was making like faux threats at Charlie and Charlie's like, Sneeko's making threats, but like, is Sneeko making threats or is he memeing for views? Just like Zena yesterday said she was going to punch me. Zena's not going to punch me. She's not going to come to Croatia and punch me. That's like for views. That's like draw. That's not real. But the internet's like, this is real, Brittany. You have to take this seriously. And I'm like, I can't. I can't take it seriously. It doesn't feel real. Right, right. But it could be I mean, real. It could be. I mean, she, 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 she is, uh, she is crazy. <laughs> she was really nice to me on DMs. Like, we, we squashed the beef. But, like, it's one of those things, right, where, like, I don't know. I can't believe that a girl. And she even said, like, oh, you know, I was just trying to, like, rile it up. And, like, I don't uh, get these content creators, bro. Right, right. So you feel like it's all performative, so why take it seriously? Yeah, a little bit. But then 
I understand that if you're in politics or something, you should take it more seriously. But girl, how many scandals about our own politicians got to come out? Like, who's even real? I don't even know what real means anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think with Sinigo, I think bringing up his past, uh, the thing is, and, and you might feel like this is just an eye for an eye situation, but I think you know, the uh, ideology that he routinely, you know, uh, spent time propping up made a made a career out of essentially judging women based off their past and judging their validity yeah. as human beings based off their sexual history or their choices in life. So I think it's perfectly fine through that lens through which he uh, made his career to look at his own behavior and say, you are a cuck and you'll always be a cuck or whatever it might be, you know? And that might be an eye for an eye, so people say it's bad, but it's important to understand that like he didn't like the same scrutiny that was applied to him that he would apply to women in their sexual behaviors or their attitudes or their things like that. And so sure. I had no problem with people bringing up his past because I think that's just what he made a career doing. I agree. You know who Sneaker reminds me of? Do you know? Do you remember who Ali London was? The white guy who like had surgery to be Korean and then he was trans yeah, yeah, for a yeah, while. Trans- it's okay. That okay. That's kind of how I see Sneeko. Like none of it's. I don't even know what part of them is real. But now that Ali London guy is a conservative who talks about protecting trans kids, and I'm like, bro, his grift is now I'm a conservative. Like, am I supposed to take them seriously? I think irrespective of whether or not you take them extremely seriously, I think like their influence is. And uh, so the main thing you have to consider here is like, let's say he is just completely grifting. That's important. So you can kind of approach it with maybe a little bit less empathy than you would otherwise. Yeah. Uh, but I think the influence that these people exert is always is real. You know, it's, 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 it's one thing to say like, Oh, this uh, transracial person who lives in a fucking cabin in the middle of nowhere thinks like, who cares, right? Yeah. Uh, but when someone's applying for benefits or things like that, then the transracial aspect becomes a little bit more important. And that same token, do I really care that this dude's a fraud if he's just some random? No, I don't care. But when they're like the leader of a group or whatever, the same way you were bo- bothered by people being fake, I think in this scenario, it makes sense to care about their the holes in their ideology if they're going to exert that influence. Yeah, I think that is fair. I would think I would like to see that. I think I'm at the pro. Okay, I will agree 100% with that if I'm going to take Sneeko seriously and his influence seriously. Because, okay, and I did make this mistake with Andrew Tate where I was like, well, just don't take him seriously. He's an idiot. And then everyone took him seriously and I was like so confused. I was like, what are we doing? And then that was a mistake because obviously this man played the game real good. I was like, oh, my God. So I guess, but Sneeko's not even playing the game that good. Isn't he kind of floundering right now? Like, who is his influence? Who is he influencing? Like, I mean, he young- has his community. He has, he has his community of people. I mean, obviously, he has people buying his courses, people yeah, reposting his stuff or sharing. You know, maybe it's not as large as an Andrew Tate group or whatever. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's definitely yeah. large enough where it's a substantial amount of people where he can li- make a fucking career. <laughs> you know, yeah, make a living. That's true. Somebody is paying for this shit. So that's there's, true. there's definitely a sizable influence. Sure. Then in that case, of course, it's all valid. Like if I wanted to, like if I talked to him the next time, obviously it'd be weird though to be like, hey, so you're fucking up. Like it's obvious you're fucking up, bro. Like it's obvious. Like he, to be fair, like he is a mess. He like mistreats women, the women he's dating. I don't even care what he says about uh, women because I know he's a slut deep down. But like he is hurting women and that is intolerable like the way he treats I, his i don't think you have to call him up and be like you're fucking up you don't have to do that but I, you yeah. just can't hand wave it that's it if you, like if that's your friend or you feel awkward about having that kind of conversation you don't have to have it i just think it's Look, weird to be like you know if he comes on and he's talking about everything that's happening you know you can't be yeah. saying stuff like oh we can't really critique sneeko because he's young like i don't know I, when, when you give people those kinds of cop-outs it's mm. now it's not that you're not pressing him it's now you're hand waving it and like making it sound like it's okay or it's not something to be taken seriously or not to be addressed and i think that's when it becomes like a bit of an awkward thing to watch unfold yeah for sure i mean i do take him very little i don't take him very seriously at all so i do hand wave him as like a kid but obviously if you ask me to take him seriously well then i'll have a more like a more of a critique and so I do take seriously the influence he has directly on people. I do take influencers in general less seriously. I'm not going to lie. Like even Logan Paul, I just don't care what he does because my brain can't process him. Like my brain can't, like this is normal. Like Abba, I'm from America. America is all about stealing money from people and scamming people. So I'm yeah, 100%. Was, but even if you don't take it seriously, okay, imagine if Logan Paul just got done scamming those people out of millions of dollars. 
Then you bring him on for an interview and you're like, yeah, everyone scams. Like it is what it is. Like if you said some stuff like that, like people are going to be rightfully upset at you because the people who were negatively impacted and hurt by that financially are going to sure. be like, well, what the fuck are you doing? Like you're normally a champion for people like, you know, you try to think or advocate for people to be able to live good lives. And here you are just being like, whatever, scammers are going to scam. It is what it is. Like well, th okay. that would be upsetting to anybody. I think it, it I, oh, okay, yes, but like I also grew up with parents that taught us like my whole life, that's a scam, that's a scam. Look at this people, this is how they're trying to sell you. Look, they say this is on sale, but it's not on sale. So my yeah. brain is like, how do I get people to understand? Scammer's gonna scam. So like, be careful. Like I hate when old people get scammed. Oh, that makes me so upset. Cause I'm like, don't scam old people who are like out of their retirements. That's just like the worst, right? That's like the cruelest of cruel. You know what sure. I mean? But so I, I understand getting angry over it, but a part of me needs to first radically accept it's going to happen and then I can do something about it. I just think getting angry about it without thinking about that it happens and accepting that it happens is a mistake because yeah. if you think like it shouldn't happen, but you're not looking at the world like a reality. The world is unfair. People aren't it, it, interested. It, it, it is unfair. Mm -hmm. It is unfair. And you know, not everyone's a sympathetic victim. A lot of people should know better. But just because they're not sympathetic victims does not mean that they're not victims nonetheless. One, For sure. And two, I agree with that. it doesn't mean that, you know, if confronted with a person who took advantage of the unsympathetic victim, it doesn't mean that we can afford to let them off the hook because someone was really stupid with their own self-defense or whatever. I agree with that. Like, look, ultimately I have my values, but then people tell me my standards are too high. So I try not to project them onto people, right? Because again, if I ask Sneeko to live like me, then I got to ask everybody to, and not everybody's going to be doing that because it's different values. So I think like I think, I'm I, open. I don't think people are expecting that. Though. I don't think people are expecting you to tell them to live like you. I think there's uh. a giant like chasm between like, don't live like me and don't scam. Don't live like me, but hey, maybe don't shame every woman on the planet about their sexual past okay. while you're really self-conscious about your sexual past. The chasm okay, between those two true. things is very different. Yeah. He does He does do those things, but that's the thing is like, look, I'm in contact with like a few of the women who've been involved with Sneeko. All those girls, I understand, but like, that's the thing. They want to believe that there's, there's a part of him that's really, really good, but that part of him is not the loudest part right now, right? So he's that part doesn't matter. But like everyone wants to save him. Everyone wants to make him better. He wants to save himself. He wants to be the cool guy. He's just like a fuck up who's like messing up time and time again. And he reminds me of my brothers. So it's hard not to see him as just like a, a kid who's fucking up, but also everyone has abandoned him. And I'm not going to risk my safety for his safety. Like we're not close like that. Like again, I know him very little. I haven't talked to him since I talked to him on online but i know yeah. enough about people and being young that i know that like he's gonna hit rock bottom and it's either gonna be really ugly and he'll end up like a homeless youtuber or he'll end up really good and he'll like make apologies for the next 20 years for everything he's done but like being one more person to pile up on him seems like such a waste of my life when there are more serious content creators i could go after that i do take seriously yeah yeah and look nobody's saying you gotta join the pile up I think it's fair mm. to say you don't want to do that when there's so many people going after him that you kind of feel sympathy for him and all this fuck up. That's fine. Um, I, I don't I, like I couldn't fault somebody who's a friend of his to still like stick by his side and say like you know what I'm not going to talk about this. But you just can't be out publicly and wait. That's it. That's but it's thing. not just that we're friends. We're not even friends like that. I don't know him like that. I only know him as a YouTuber. We're not. We're right. not that okay. close. Well, regardless of whatever the relationship is, like what you know, if you feel that feeling sympathy, it's just. Yeah, I, when I, I mean, when I, I feel it like bring him on. Yeah. And then they can't critique him because he's young or, you know, yeah, can't judge I mean, I do path. critique like, him, just, right? Yeah. Like I say it in all of my live streams. Don't date Sneeko. He's a, he's like a garbage human right now, but he's like doing his own thing. But I don't know why people never hear that. I don't know. I, I didn't see those. I, I just saw the interview with him. So that's what I was. That's fair. Just. That interview. I was way too leaning on him. Fully agree. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's probably why people have some issue with it. But I mean, I, I, I didn't agree. look at it and be like, yo, Brittany. Yo, but I was like, I, I have we disagree with what Brittany's doing right now, but like it is what it is. I don't have to agree with everything she does. Okay, I fully agree. I went too soft on him, so like I'm more than happy to like. Uh, I should have gone a little like I should have made my stance more clear, like what I think more clear, because yeah, I think that would have yeah. helped. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think that's definitely a thing. But yeah, I wasn't even going to talk about this, by the way. Uh, you just brought it up to me, so I was like, oh yeah, that thing. But uh, thank you, yeah, I appreciate I you even taking notes. That's so great. <laughs> I, I, and I swear to God, I literally deleted them like three days ago. And I, and I just so remember funny. where the cycling bit. So I was like, I'm kind of glad. Without them, I don't think I would have remembered. It. That's so funny. I'm glad you called, though. It's nice to hear your voice. And I, uh, I said, oh, can I tell you something? Your last video made me think you died. Uh, I definitely your didn't die. 
your thumbnails look so, you when you talk about emotional stuff i literally think oh my god someone died it preaches and in the thumbnail what's going on i click on it and you're just like i love my fans i love my audience and i'm like fucking this man i'm not even clickbaiting them with like death titles though it's just like it's just like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's a little bit of a like introspective serious looking thumbnail i guess yeah that's true that's true it is it is it's not, it it's, was... it's, not it's not like i wrote he's gone three dots so like, I, I didn't write nothing like <laughs> I don't even know what the title was. The title was like not a good leader or some shit like that. It wasn't even like death related. Stop. Well, it looked ominous. I was like, oh no. And then it was sweet and loving. And I'm like, oh my God, stop. No, 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 no. No, I would never clickbait people or do some weird stuff with like death things. So if anything yeah. terrible happens, I'll, I'll probably, I don't know. I don't know how to know where I yeah. will do it too. <sighs> well, it's good to hear your voice. Anything else on your noggin tonight? No, no, that was it. That was it. I was just, uh, I thought it was a little funny thing, but hey, listen, uh, I will let you go. Let you get back to your streaming business. Thanks. All right. Good catch up. Call anytime. Yes, ma'am. Cheers. Okay. Bye. In my head, in me life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 da, 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 da.